Next, we'll be speaking about how to make uh, healthcare more accessible and making the whole experience more human. Today, Frederick, the co-founder of Dr. Alia, today part of Doc Planner Group, one of the largest platforms for appointment booking of doctors that's present in more than 13 countries and has had uh, more than 360 million um, uh, users around the world, uh, is here with us today. As usual, Aline will be interviewing Frederick and that has a short presentation and uh, we can ask the questions that come from the audience later on. Hi everybody, welcome back. So it's my pleasure to be back here to introduce the next speaker who is Frederic Jordax. So he's one of the founders of Dr. Alia, so a medical uh, appointment booking platform from Spain that was purchased by Doc Planner a few years ago, making it like one of the biggest platform to book medical appointment as of today. And he will tell us most, more about that. And Frederic would also tell us um, how new technologies can make the healthcare experience more human. Frederic, all yours. Thank you so much, Aline. It was a pleasure uh, being here with so many friends to talk about our experience with the, in that field from the, the planner group. So just for starting the, the point, it's uh, just uh, next. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, that is, uh, well, what's the planner group? At the end of the day, we try to give a, a solution for patients that, uh, that could help them to find a doctor, book a visit or solve any a health issue related uh, doubt or whatever. For doctors, we, we help them to have a digital identity, saving the time managing visits and uh, and trying to cut no shows by half. And for clinics also the, the, in the same idea of delivering an exceptional patient experience uh, in every clinic. So in figures, that's the next uh, slide. Uh, we, as, as a group, we are uh, probably the biggest to all the a healthcare platform. So working from seven offices near uh, 1,400 employees uh, in, uh, and we, we are giving service to uh, a dozen of countries with uh, 1.7 million healthcare professionals engaged, uh, 50 million uh, monthly visits from patients looking for a doctor or healthcare professional, uh, 4 million monthly bookings uh, that, uh, well, uh, are around our platforms. And uh, since this last year, 2020, we, we, we started the, the online, telemedicine, uh, online telemedicine service with, with uh, the now. Uh, uh, in the last year, it was 2.3 million users. We are over uh, 3 million appointments or visits uh, related with our platforms. Uh, we also offer 4.5 million re reviews of the services that patients have, have, have used in, in the platform, giving this uh, extra uh, amount of information to, to other patients. And as I said, you were really leading in 12 countries in Europe and mainly uh, Latin America. So uh, for the next slide, uh, the team is a very diverse team. So we are, we as, as Aline told you, uh, we are we have been um, acquired as a doctoralia, but, but uh, we are now in, we have a great team in the planner group that, uh, that has, uh, well, uh, let's say uh, top-notch uh, people that really uh, are in charge of all that. Let's say that uh, Polish, Italian and the Spanish team in the, in the main positions, but, but well, now the most important thing is that we have a, 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 unique, a unique culture that is something that's really important for, for us next. Next, next slide, please. Uh, well, about the products, so we, we based everything in the marketplace of doctors and medical services uh, that uh, create a, a, an accessible and safe environment for patients for make these appointments, to book these appointments that I mentioned, to solve the healthcare doubts, and also be in touch with professionals meeting new and, uh, and keeping the, their own uh, doctors in, that they treated them in the past. So next. The other products that we are working at is uh, working with is, is a software as a service platform that really can help the, the, the healthcare specialist uh, and clinics to have this tool to manage their own their own uh, consultants, their, their own medical office. Uh, and not only in the real in, in the reality, in the in the in the physical way, but also in the virtual. Uh, improving and helping to this communication. So yes, as and the, and the PMS, then the, this uh, Medical practice management uh, tools and and uh, and the other streams that, uh, that of of well of revenue for us and of service for our customers the, in medical centers and, and doctors 
are the, the patient management scheduling solutions for big hospitals like Tuotempo and, and the phone that is always a big pain in the healthcare, uh, in the healthcare industry. We are uh, opening uh, and we have opened a new service with uh, based in voice uh, IP technology to, to scale and to help uh, these, all these businesses. So in the next slide, we can see that uh, that well we our business model uh, our business model has changed or is moving from from a freemium model that really offers this opportunity to be in the, in our uh, in our marketplaces uh, to uh, to a monthly revenue model based in the software as a service uh, platforms that we are using to give the, the this uh, this possibility to manage your own medical office uh, as as a doctor or as a medical center so our competitors are very clear. So people that that in every country has their own competitor. The, the, our good thing is that we are we we are very uh, let's say that we have our our space. We lead in our spaces in Latin America in, and uh, let's say in Southern Europe and and the uh, Poland and Eastern yeah. Europe. We are also very very powerful. And uh, and really the, this is what we we do. We are very focused in healthcare. That is also a big a big thing to take in account for next. And uh, let's say that that we have raised uh, in in this time since we came on board with with the planner, uh, the, a lot of series of money have been raised. So we have we are very healthy as as a company and and growing. Uh, and uh, this is what uh, is allowing us to accomplish all the 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 all the 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 the, the, the places that we we are arriving to all the places we wanted to be in time. And, and this is giving a lot of confidence to our to our investors. So next, uh, but this year, this 2020 was a real a, a real challenge for us, for us as for the rest of the world. Uh, let's face it. So the the pandemic uh, had a, a radical effect in our operations uh, from from down to top. Let's say so. Next, in in this time, we, we, this time has really made the to change the world. The, to to if it was digital, it's still is still more digital. No, this this uh, information from from uh, uh, McKinsey's uh, company, Paul, uh, really uh, shows uh, how has grown uh, around Europe the the digitalization of the of the population. So really, this growth uh, uh, is it has been forced because of the need of of being. Uh, because of the pandemic of, of uh, having services at home that and trying to avoid uh, big places with people. No? So next. So uh, for us uh, as a company, we, we uh, really suffer the, in our skin, in our, in our, in our flesh, the, the pain of, of losing a lot of users. So in the, for the first, from the first news in January, uh, about the of the COVID in China, we we experienced that, that in February a dramatic drop of the online appointments, and this was this was because uh, um, all of our our customers were doctors and medical facilities that uh, were based in in this physical face to face contact, and and th and this was we realized that very fast that that we had to do something, and the, and the something that we had in our in our roadmap that it was. Uh, the telemedicine, a telemedicine tool that it was okay. Let's one of these days we will work on that. We really moved uh, on very fast, and all the company, like like one man, uh, developed in less than uh, two weeks uh, uh, a first version of a tool to 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 make uh, video video telemedicine calls uh, available for our for our customers and users, uh, offering this service for free. Uh, in in most of the countries uh, where we where we were able to do it, and uh, and well, and, and we also developed a, a, an internal chat tool for for the former uh, uh, patients for for the doctors, and and this was in March. So next, uh, the the point was that that in May we also we, we realized that we needed something more, and we were we, uh, there were projects like the prescription that we have that start starting to develop in Mexico and Brazil. We were also developed in, in Spain and, and of course in Poland, and uh, and this really drove us to move forward to have an electric uh, an, an electronic healthcare record and a new patients up stronger and that, and that really was was better for all for all the fits. So for us, the 2020 was really a challenge, but but well, we think that uh, think that that we have been reinforced because of that. So uh, next, please. 
so so now let's talk about what will happen for the future not only for the, the planner group but probably for the rest of the people uh, the, the uh, something to take to take in account is that is that probably this this affirmation from uh, anand laya uh, is a is the, of the blockbuster drug of the century is the engaged patient has been never so real as now so you need uh, the, to strengthen the communication between patients and, and their doctors, the healthcare facilities. And this is the place where technology must be, at, a place that, that really uh, can help uh, each other to, to have a, a better experience uh, and uh, to have a better healthcare results for everybody. So next. Uh, the, the other in interesting thing is that uh, Mary Meeker, that is uh, a Silicon Valley analyst, uh, launched uh, uh, a special report uh, at the half of the 2020, and and, uh, and one of the important parts of, of this traditional report, uh, it was about healthcare. So uh, she mentioned that that there are five trends that really will be important in this uh, upcoming future because of the COVID and and uh, and uh, after that, uh, one was the telehealth, so telemedicine as a faster. And, uh, and better tool uh, and, and even cheaper in some cases, that okay is the place where the planner group is. The connected devices that uh, based on these telehealth uh, tools, uh, having uh, internet connected monitoring uh, services will be good for chronic patients. That is uh, an interesting place to, to have a look. The rapid point of care diagnostics that really uh, are, are very important. We have seen with the PCR uh, anal analysis and, and, and this kind of analysis that will have a place to be uh, and the, if we also add this this digital part of the of being uh, having a digital part uh, that really could connect the, with the with our uh, smartphones uh, still better to have this capillarity that really population will need in the future for their for their diseases the other thing it was the the, the interoperability that is one of the challenges of the century i would say not only in, in healthcare but also well in banking this has been reached but there are also many other industries that really will work in that direction. And last but not least, the application of artificial intelligence, uh, uh, making, uh, helping to have automatic processes and giving more service to more patients, to more people with less resources. Now, let's say that, that, that those five trends are really very important and will be very important in the future, not only for us, as I said, but also for, for the most of the population of the, of the globe and, and uh, of, for sure for all of the companies that really are involved in healthcare treatments and healthcare fa facilities. So next, the other, the other thing is that, is that we are very, uh, well, we, we feel very, very optimistic because uh, as uh, we can see in this McKinsey graphic, also there is a, 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 a still a large gap uh, among what uh, users expect from from their digital, uh, from the, from their healthcare facilities and from the pharma uh, the pharma industry, and and what to, where are we now? No? so there is a, a, a large uh, space, uh, a large gap to be filled with technology, with digitalization, with new coming services, and there is a, a if if somebody really says that that uh, no this will be never necessary uh, we could also face the have a look to who's the last one who's the most digitalized industry that is traveling industry that really has made uh, has ha has had to to do an effort uh, because of the uh, of the pandemic and probably they will recover very fast because of that because of how easy how digitalized is now so next and now uh, let's let's finish with where is good panel going. So now now we, we are leading the the the, the industry of the, of the appointment healthcare the digital appointment uh, healthcare industry uh, in in six countries like Brazil, in Poland, Mexico, Italy, Spain, and Turkey. And but we are only scratching the surface of the market. We are only on the three percent of the address, all the addressable market. So there is a lot of Field to run to to be uh, still to, uh, in in well to to to, to grow no to, to have to have to be more successful. We hope to be in one year also uh, going harder to to uh, to sell to clinics and big institutions. Now we are owning uh, probably the, the this space of small uh, clinics and and doctors, but we have uh, products we have uh, we have bought in the past. Companies that really will help you will help us with their products to 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 reach this this space. In two years, uh, we are going to disrupt this uh, medical practice management software industry, 
uh, making, well, trying to put out of the market these ugly and difficult to use uh, softwares, uh, legacies from the past and uh, old fashion. Some of them access based that, that is not even in, in, the, in the Microsoft catalog. So, so there is a lot of, of uh, space and work to be done on that. And for the, for the three years, we, we expect to be dominating with a 40% of the market, uh, of, of our markets. Uh, and especially helping millions of patients to have uh, a better care uh, every day. So this is our future. Let's see, let's see us in four years and let's discuss about if we reach it or not, but we are in the, in the good direction. So, so the, the next one is where, where, how we will do it. So, and this is the, the, the answer to, to the question, uh, just making the healthcare experience more human. And that's all for my side, at least for my, for my presentation and all the data. Thank you for this opportunity. And Aline, I'm absolutely open to any question that you can have uh, for, for me and, uh, and well, about uh, the planner and about whatever you want. Thank you. Very Congratulations for that very interesting overview. It's really nice to see how Dr. Ali and Dr. Planner have evolved those past years, no? And to be yeah, well today. So Sorry. You were... Yeah. You were talking about, um, so Dr. Rea, Dr. Planner, how you scale, you're in many countries today. Can you share a bit about the challenges about scaling up in so many different countries? Well, this is an interesting point. So we have learned a lot uh, scaling. So, so there are, uh, I think that there are other startups and even companies that, that uh, think that, uh, that going to the to healthcare market is like going to the restaurants or the, or the, the hotels market. And this is not like that. So there are a lot of not only regional or European regulations, but there are also even local regulations that you must fit in. No? And uh, an interesting point is that even, even there are not the same specialties of doctors from one country to the another, to the other. No? And, and this is something that we have, we have learned for all, all these years. So then you must be able to adapt locally very well, adapt the, 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 the product locally that makes us to be better than others because of the old experience we have acquired for all these years and uh, and also because because a generalist that can try to to fit on and uh, the first word that comes to my mind is amazon should uh, should adapt and um, very well to local regulations and this is not easy and and for me is uh, is one of the one of the things is that you must have uh, people local people and try to to be locally strong, to, to try to grow. You know? and, and, and this is the, the point. It's like trying to be, for us, even I think that the, the good strategy is trying to, to be strong in, in the countries you, you are good at and not trying to grow like crazy uh, instead of the amount of resources you have because it's not, it's not so easy. And do you think that it helps to, to go first to countries with the same language? Absolutely, absolutely. For us, it was a really an advantage, uh, and in the doctoralia time, uh, it it was uh, it was very easy. One of the things it was that there was a long time ago. So <laughs> that is when nobody was looking at the, at healthcare, at digital health. Even the word, the, the the idea of digital health was, uh, let's say, uh, a, a, well, a dream of of a crazy dream of of some of some visionaries, no? and 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 nobody was thinking that this would be a business, but the point it was that for us uh, it was a, we had an advantage coming from from Spain, trying trying to to speak with people with Mexico, uh, Chile, Argentina, Colombia, and even with Brazil, it, 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 that is not the same language as Portuguese. Uh, we could find a lot of uh, of uh, Portuguese speaking and Brazilians uh, here in Barcelona that that could help us to to try to at least develop remotely our business. That it was a great thing. So uh, for for uh, I think that that Barcelona was a great platform for us to go to to Latin America, and uh, I I guess that uh, for many others, even even the English speaking uh, countries uh, have seen the landing of American companies easily because of that, and and uh, and big languages really uh, are an advantage for for uh, for the, this kind of startups like. That, that start small and that really with a, a global vocation willing to scale. Mm -hmm. And you talk also about marketplaces. How important are marketplaces, especially in, in healthcare? 
Well, I think that marketplaces uh, have been there always, but uh, the point it was that we were not the specialized marketplaces and it was there were not online marketplaces. So yellow pages were a marketplace at the end of the day. And people, and even the list of, of uh, doctors with agreements and medical centers and, and hospitals with agreement with insurance companies were, were marketplaces, you know, branded marketplaces uh, for, for a group of customers, but marketplaces at the end of the day. The big thing now is that uh, everything is on the internet and, and the, 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 this big marketplace can be reached um, from outside the country, can be reached from people that is not the customer of the insurance company, can be reached even for people just for curiosity to, to see if the neighbor is, not, is or is not a doctor really, as he says, or, or, your, or your last crash. No? So, so the, there is a lot. We are living in, a, in an era of transparency that had to came to to healthcare industry and and uh, I think that uh, that uh, the marketplaces are are giving this part of the transparency and this is only the beginning I hope. And so, as you said, uh, tel tel telemedicine has exploded those past month with with the pandemic, and many healthcare professionals who were not using telemedicine before start starting use, using it, but. It's not really something that you learn uh, in the medical school, right? So how important is education? What are you doing at Doc Planner to educate those doctors with, with your sort of telemedicine solution? And what do you think can be done really to, to support us healthcare professionals with that education part? Well, this is, a, this is an interesting point. One, one of the barriers that really professional healthcare professionals have when, when uh, you ask them to, make, to, to use telemedicine uh, tools and to, to treat uh, on, on, the, on, on online patients is that nobody has, has uh, teach them how to do that. So there is a lack of, of uh, well, of uh, formation, a lack of, of competence uh, of, or, 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 or of skills that, that uh, should be uh, should teach it somewhere. We have a, a Doc Planner Academy, a Dr. Ali Academy, trying to help them to, to be better online. But this is not a part of uh, something that uh, private industry, uh, private companies should do. Uh, I, I, I bet on you that, that uh, sooner or later we will see telemedicine as something to be, to be learned in the university and the medical, medical schools. Uh, infirmary schools, physiotherapy schools, because it's something that will be part uh, of the daily activity of the of the healthcare professionals, and this will be very soon. I hope so. And you also mentioned um, the voice IP solution that you recently implemented. Can you tell us a bit more about that? I think that's a very interesting technology, and, and well, the future is going there. Well, it's an interesting technology because of the of the that's easy to be managed and and uh, and it's not so. Uh, we, we, I think that that we are also going to this the, going back to the the time when the small companies gave big service. So tele, tele big telecoms are really trying to keep all the market out of uh, out of the, their well nearby, no, it's closed. So they want to the, to have all the customers uh, paying them. And we are trying to open a small window for healthcare facilities to help them on this job to to well to not to lose phone calls from so many patients. That is something that is uh, well, it, it's a part of uh, not only healthcare industry but so many others that really have the phone of the main source of uh, of uh, customers that, that are the patients in that case. And and we have worked on that, and this is a, we have an interesting advance on that, and, and we think that that really has a, a good future for us. Fantastic, and so you also mentioned engage patients, and, and I agree. I think that's also like we see the patients being more and more engaged, more and more in charge of their own health. What do you think can be done to engage them even more? I mean, from the planner point of view. Well, we will have launched the, the new patients app because of that, because we have realized that, that patients really need useful tools. We know that our experience of years says that, that if you are useful, you, you are uh, used, let's say, you know, as, a, as, a, as an app or as a platform or, or as, as a tool at the end of the day. If you really become a tool for the patient, uh, you will be there always. And, and this is what we are trying to do. And, and uh, having, having a nice app that really gives you 
whatever you need is, is a good thing. And whatever you need is, is having this direct uh, contact with your healthcare professionals that really are, are with you, that really are, are giving you service, uh, answering questions, not only to your doctor that maybe is not available, but to, to any, any other doctor that really can help you. And, and this is what we try to do, helping uh, as much as we can to the patient that really is the one that really is giving us the reason because of these 50 million uh, users that we have. So the, the success key for the planner group uh, is not only tools for doctors, it's having great tools for patients. And, and this is, this is uh, how we work and, and we are trying to improve that. Okay. And maybe my, my final question to you. So you mentioned uh, Mary Meeker and uh, the projection that, that she, she's doing for the future, right? So yeah. I would love to hear Federic's prediction for the future. Where do you see the, the future? What are the, the trends? What are the technologies that you think will impact the, the future of healthcare? Well, the, there is a. The, of course, uh, artificial intelligence has to has to be a part of of uh, what will be the next thing, not only in in healthcare but in in services to people, because they allow a lot of things. If you, if they are vertical enough, if they're very, very well designed and have a real purpose, uh, artificial intelligence even to chatbot can work uh, a lot but the other interesting thing for me is that once you are you have a diagnostic and you have a chronic disease uh, the, how uh, why not monitoring as Mary Meeker says why not mon monitoring patients on the distance and and only with two or three parameters probably you could uh, have them under control and with the help of artificial intelligence you could uh, react fast when something gets wrong or something gets bad, things go bad, you can then uh, activate the new, a new uh, a healthcare resource and, and having a, a fast response that is key for not having, uh, well, a lot of people in emergency rooms in, re in really bad situation or ICUs. And, and for me, it's about that. It's about, about uh, using technology to be faster in, in the, in the, in giving giving the healthcare, that is what people is looking for. I think that the the 21st century patient is not a a patient that will ask if if is a person or if a machine the one that really giving the service, but the one that will ask for the service right now and as soon as possible in order to have the better results. And this is the the mindset that uh, healthcare uh, professionals and healthcare industry has not made. You know, the, I, this this change of of uh, of my of mentality about no the, the being very human being very very kind the best doctor the best no it's not the best doctor it's the doctor that treats you as soon as possible and better and this is about that because we, we luckily we live in the century where there are uh, there are so many doc good doctors in the world as never had have, have been before and the, the medicine has been now the medicine is much better than ever that means that uh, that why why trying to wait on the line if really you can use technology to jump uh, off the line to have a, a fast a fast response and this is for me the the what's next the, the real next is let's give the patients what they really they need. Exactly. Well, Federic, thank you so much. It was a pleasure to to share that session with you, and uh, give the floor back to uh, the health, health Tech Europe team. Thank you so much. Thanks to you. Uh, thanks to you again. And see you again. Yeah, soon. <laughs>